Thomas M. Dyke is retired. In cooperation with the Department of Defense, we bring you another true and exciting submarine story. We call it the Jack at Tokyo. If it were fiction, we might well call it the tight squeeze. It is the story of a slender man with a stout heart who played the key role in an agonizing dilemma. On June 5th, 1943, the USS Jack departed from Pearl Harbor with orders to attack shipping in the Tokyo area. This is her crew. Not only was this the first submarine, but the first ship of any kind for most of them, but months of intensive training had welded them into a fighting unit. In addition to the officers, there was a small group of old submariners to rally around. Among these was Chief Motor Machinist's mate, Earl Archer. You didn't have to worry about the engines with Archer in charge. Here at last was the forbidding coastline of Japan. Nearby lay the busiest port in the empire, Tokyo. The men of the Jack prepared to carry out their orders. Sticking their heads right into the lion's mouth, so to speak, they worked dangerously close to the coast of Honshu. And they got action. A convoy of merchant ships with escorts approached. The captain maneuvered his submarine into a position between the escorts and the convoy and fired. No hits. Here come the escorts. Down, periscope. Ball ahead, fall. Emergency, 200 feet. 200 feet. Flood negative. Negative flooding. The escort's speeding up. Turn on your speaker. Break for depth charge. Break for depth charge. It's passing overhead. Charges cracked something in the main induction. Water's running out of the drain. How bad is it, Archer? I can't tell, but it's a solid stream of the drain. If we start pumping now, those Japs will hear us for sure. See what you can do about it. Join in feet, Captain! Break for silent running. Break for silent running. Break for silent running. Escort started to run. Right full rudder, all ahead one third. Right full rudder, all ahead one third. John maneuvering until further notice will give speed changes on the telephone. Maneuvering until further notice. We will give speed changes on the telephone. Secure the steering motor, shift the hand steering. Assemble all helmsmen in the control room, ready to take turns at the wheel. They're not going to last long with the blowers off. Aye, yes, sir. How about the gyro? I'll secure that, too. we use magnetic compass for steering. Right full rudder. Right full rudder. can't hear us walk, but if it makes anybody feel better, it's worth doing. They're coming in for another run. Left full rudder. 
Left full rudder. Hold on, tell Archer I want to report in that leak. That should have brought the Japs, but it didn't. The depth charging got farther and farther away as the Jack headed slowly toward deep water. It's all clear. We've given them the slip. Secure from silent running. Start the pump. Take charge, Jim. I'll be in the engine room. Aye, aye, sir. The leak somewhere in this 18-inch piping where it runs outside the hull. Could be leaking in any of a dozen places. About 100 feet of piping from the conning tower of the engine room. It can hold more than four tons of water. Well, the leak's slow now, but another depth charge and she could let go all at once. Yeah, we'd go down like a rock. Huh. Any luck? We'll need luck to find this one, Captain. Mm -hmm. First time I've seen you stumped, don't you? It's a new one on me, Captain. Trouble is, on the surface, she won't leak. Submerged, we can't get at it. The same thing happened to me once in an ass boat. It took the Navy Yard to find it. Well, we have two choices, and they're both bad. We can go home and give the Japs a free run, or we can stay here and fight under handicap till we find the leak. If we stay, we risk losing the ship. I'm afraid that'll have to be it. The Japs were aware that they had failed to destroy the intruding submarine. An all-out search was ordered, utilizing planes, and surface ships, and even PT boats. Running with the current, the wounded Jack tried to put as much distance as possible between her and the point of attack. She had submerged at 4 o'clock that morning. It wouldn't be dark until 9.30. Each hour grew more critical. Captain, battery's getting pretty low. Hmm. They'll be dark enough to service in about an hour. Last that long? Just about. Certainly not much longer. How's the leak? About the same. Maybe a little faster, if anything. Well, at least we haven't seen Tojo's boys for the past three hours. If our luck holds, we'll make it. After this morning, we've got a change of luck coming. Well, we can feel lucky about one thing. The air condition. If we were down in one of the old boats this long, we'd be swimming in our own sweat. Doesn't take the place of oxygen, though. Captain, we've picked up the sound of enemy search gear. I haven't been able to see them yet. The sound man says there's more than one ship. They're bearing north. I'll have a look up there, Scott. I don't 
don't see anything. Could be submarines. Yeah, maybe. And the diving officer, take her up three feet. Plane her up three feet. Here's one of them. Looks like an anti-submarine vessel. Here's another. And another off the beam. It's a hunter-killer group. They're strung in a line, and we're dead ahead of them. Tom Paris. We can never run around them with what's left in the battery. All we can do is go deep and hope they pass over without detecting us. Take it down to 300 feet. Go below. Tell O'Brien to shut down the air conditioning, the ventilation blowers, fans, unnecessary lights, and anything else we don't have to have. I'm telling you how long this will last. The hunter-killer group came closer and closer, spaced equally each side of the position of the jack. She was perfectly bracketed. The setup was too good to be true for the Japs. There's one on each side of us and one overhead. I can hear his propellers. Stop. They've shifted to the sounding machine. What was about a mile deep here. If they get a sounding at 300 feet, they'll know they're over a submarine. That leak's making us heavy, Captain. We'll either have to pump or speed up. Now, boys, here we go. This will either lose them or bring them. Left full rudder, all ahead two thirds. Left full rudder, all ahead two thirds. The captain knew that Jack's battery would take him only one more mile before he'd have to surface. He also knew he was no match for a hunter-killer group. There was no alternative. Take stations for gun action. Keep the gun's crew below and ready until I see whether or not they spot us. Aye, sir. Surface. <laughs> badly battered, but in the next few days and nights, everything was repaired. But the elusive leak. Day by day, it got worse. On June 26, 1943, the Jack was faced with her severest test. Another submarine reported by radio that a heavily escorted convoy was headed their way. We should be here about daylight. This is the kind of spot we've always wanted to be in. They don't know we're here, and we know they're coming. Be happy about it myself, except for one thing. That blasted leak. If you're playing around with escort vessels, you need your full three strikes, and we'll be starting the game with two against us. One strike's all you need against these guys? Who knows? We'll be working against a new pitcher tomorrow. Captain? We're pretty busy, Archer. Can it wait? It's about the leak, sir. What about the leak? I think I know how to find it. Shoot? I believe I'm small enough to get inside that pipe. We can open the big valve in the engine room, and I'll crawl through it with a flashlight until I spot the leak. I don't know, Archer. That's pretty risky. You'll have to make your way through 100 feet of pipe with water pouring in all the time. You get hung up in there, nobody can help you. I'll take my chances. Suppose your body blocks the pipe and the water builds up around you. You'll drown. I figure that, Captain. But it's the only way to do it. We all know that. Okay, Arch. If we're going to make those repairs tonight, you better get started right away. You ready? I'm ready. Well, lucky it's Archer. How's that, Captain? If he does get hung up in that pipe, I don't think he'll lose his head. People panic, they swell up. Can I have a shirt on, Arch? Sure, I get scratched up in that pipe. 
Yeah. If I catch on something, hold me back. Maybe you ought to grease your shoulders. It'll make you slide through easy. It might make me lose traction in case I got hung up. Thanks anyway. You get the thanks. After this, you can spit in my eye any time. Are you all set? Yes, sir. That flashlight might get flooded in there. How about a spare? Well, I didn't think I could handle it, so I taped this one up to keep the water out. I guess you're right. Archer, good luck. Sir. Thank you, sir. Open the hole, Flapper. Jim, let me know if he heads this way. Aye, aye, sir. How's Archer doing? Don't know, sir. You okay, Arch? Arch, you okay? Mr. Roach, we, we know that, but we can't risk another man. Don't keep an eye on that destroyer. Arch! I think I hear him. Yeah, I do. I see his feet. too soon. 
The convoy they were expecting was right on time. Clear the deck! Clear the bridge! Die! Die! Level off at 60 feet. We've got five ships in column and they're close. Let's make it good. Up periscope. Ready all torpedo tubes on the double. Get this on the number two in column. Mark bearing. Three, two, zero. Angle on the bow, 60 starboard. Mark range. 1,800 yards. Estimated speed, nine knots. Down, Bariscope. I don't see any escorts. What about those tubes? All tubes ready, sir. Up, Bariscope. How should she bear, Jim? B-37. Put her on for me, Jim. Ah, there she is. Mark bearing. Three, three, nine. Set. Fire. One is fired. Two is fired. In the melee that followed, the Jack sank the number two and number three ships in column and damaged the number four. The last ship stayed well astern of the action and ran in circles. The skipper left his periscope up so that everyone could have a look at their kills as they went under. Soon the last ship steadied on a course directly for the Jack's periscope. The Jack was headed for her. Down the throat. Angle on the bow zero. Mark the range. 1,000 yards. Set. While concentrating on this emergency, they weren't aware that another player had sneaked into the game. Periscope's gone. Diving control's knocked out. What's the depth gauge read? Must be busted. Says we're on the surface. This one checks. We are on the surface. Take her down, Miles. She won't go under. We'll flood everything. Sound the collision alarm. Range to the ship, 200 yards. 175. 150. Only a miracle could prevent the ramming. But it happened. The submarine started down with a lurch. All back emergency. Blow bow buoyancy, blow all ballast tanks. It was five miles deep here. The jack plunged out of control. Her crew finally stopped her descent far below the depth her designers intended. Any deeper, she would have collapsed like an eggshell. The post-war record shows that the Japanese claimed a sinking. For those few sinking moments, no one in the submarine would have argued the point. The men of the USS Jack didn't need to be told what might have been, or rather what would have been, except for the ingenuity and courage of a slender man with a stout heart who was not afraid of a tight squeeze. Now my privilege to introduce to you the man with the stout heart. He was a chief petty officer then, but he is now Lieutenant Commander Earl M. Archer, United States Navy. Admiral? Mr. Archer, did the show bring back any memories to you? It sure did, Admiral, when you make a patrol like that, when you never forget it. Must have made you feel like you were there again. It did, but there's one big difference I'm sure of. What's that, Mr. Archer? I enjoyed it this time. <laughs> you were decorated for that patrol, weren't you? Yes, sir, the Bronze Star Medal. Well, congratulations to you again and continued good luck to you. Thank you, Admiral. I was especially proud to present Lieutenant Commander Archer to you because if it had not been for his unselfish heroism, I wouldn't be here. You see, we were shipmates on this patrol of the Jack. I was his skipper. <laughs>